Survey data is ubiquitous. We find surveys everywhere and they are a challenge to model and visualize well. In this example, we're taking a case study of a short, simple survey. We're going to import it into Power BI. We're going to create a data model that helps us build a visualization that communicates effectively to an audience the key results. So let's get started. Let's have a look at our survey. It's made up of five questions. The first four questions ask the user to give a rating between one and five stars and they're asking them to rate four different topic ideas for our future events for our community group. Crime, COVID, schools and elections. The fifth question is completely optional and it's free text, any suggestions that they might have. Here's what the results look like. We've got 81 rows because there were 81 responses. Each row has a unique ID of the respondent, the times that they completed it, and it has a column for each question with a five star rating. So those are those the four columns. Each of those has a number between one and five representing the number of stars. Finally, it has a comments column that's sometimes blank because sometimes people didn't fill it in. I've also created a couple of small help tables. The first one is this. It basically is a table of all the questions, the four questions, the question code, that's the same as the column name and a short and a long description. We've also got uh, a kind of score table and that has one to five, same as the, the ratings that people gave and a kind of label, a sentiment. And I've said that people clicked on one, they decided that it was very boring. If five, fascinating and if three, okay. I've imported the data into Power BI and here it is. We're looking at the data pane and here's our survey data. It looks exactly as it is in Excel and I've also brought in those helper tables. If we look at the question, those are our four questions and if we have a look at our scores as well. There we go. Don't worry about the other tables like, such as Jekyll and the other ones. We'll be coming on to those later. I'm in the report pane on a blank page. In the field list, we can see the survey table exactly as it was in the data pane. And the one thing I've done is I've created this measure called the number of surveys, hash surveys, and that simply is equal to the no, counting the rows in the survey. Let's use that to create our first visualization. And I'm going to create a column chart. And let's say I'm interested in the distribution of ratings for COVID. So I'll put COVID on my axis. I'll put number of surveys on my values. And we get our first chart. What I've done here is I've done it not just for COVID, but for all four of those questions. And we can see the kind of distribution of ratings that I use as I've given it. So if we have a look at elections here, we can see that uh, five stars was given by 30 people of the 81 and 10 people rated this as one star. We might be interested if there's any relationship in the way that people voted. Did, for example, people who voted for COVID also vote highly for crime? So what we can do is we can create a scatter chart and we can put COVID on our x-axis, crime on our y-axis, and the number of surveys on our size. We don't actually want the count, we want not to summarize. And I'll do the same for crime. And Power BI has this uh, a slightly annoying habit of clipping the exactly to the, the limits to the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for my x-axis, instead of being one to five, which is the data, I'll say naught to six, and I'll do the same for my y-axis. And so I get my first scatter chart. I've done that for all the pop possible combinations of these four questions and we see the correlations. I don't think this tells us anything particularly much. We've done an exploratory visualization. Sometimes they work and gain insights, sometimes they don't. We could perhaps maybe say that there is some sort of inverse relationship here. Those people who like schools on the x-axis maybe are not so keen on hearing all about COVID on the y-axis. Now we'd like to ask what was the average rating for each of those questions and here we come up against a problem. 
The best way that we can do this is if we take each of the questions and put them in the values field. Here's COVID, and instead of count, I'm just going to make it an average. And I've just done the same for crime, elections and schools. Now we have our chart. It does tell us that the least popular by far is our COVID topic and the most popular is our schools, but it's not very good. The reason is that we've had to put all these four on the values. We hadn't got a question code that we could put on the axis. So what we need to do is to change the shape of our data and to allow that. We're back in our data pane and looking at the survey table. It's what's called a wide table. For each question, each rating question, it's got a different column. So it has got four columns, one for crime, school, elections, and COVID. And if we had 10 more questions on our survey, we would have had 10 more columns. What we need to get to is something that looks a bit like this table. This is what's called a long table. It has four times as many rows as the table we've just seen. It has 324 rows rather than 81. And instead of having a column for each question, it's only got one column with the score and another column which tells us as the question name. It's what's called a long table. So if I have a look at respondent uh, two, a single respondent, for example, he or she before had one row. Now they have four rows, each with a different question code, each with their score. Once we've got that, what we can do, and I'm in a modeling pane here, this is the response table that we've created. We can also link it up to our question table. And if we also break out the, the, the details about our respondent, the respondent ID and so on, we can join it up to that, as well as joining up to that score sentiment table that we had before that labeled the score to the labels such as boring and interesting and so on. Where does that get us? Well, I'm back in the report pane and I'm looking in the field list at that response table that we've just seen in the data pane. I've also created a couple of measures on it. One is simply the average of the scores and another is simply a count of the responses called the number of respondents. What I can do is I can create a bar chart as before, put on my average score and against my question code. And now I've got a, a much nicer chart. And in fact, I can go further than that and build all sorts of different um, clustered bar charts in various ways, or even go and recreate those original uh, simple uh, topic bar charts that we saw before. But we've jumped ahead of ourselves. How did we create that response table? Here I am in the query editor. I've got the response table here and I'll walk through the steps. First of all, we simply reference the survey table. So our response table starts where our survey table stops. And then what we did is we removed those columns apart from the respondent's ID and the four rating columns. We need the respondent's ID to link it back to the uh, respondent table that we're going to create. Um, I simply renamed those columns ID to respondent ID and then I unpivoted on respondent ID to get my long shape. But instead of calling attribute and value, I've called it question code and score. I also created this respondent table in a very similar way. I again referenced the survey table, that's a copy. I renamed ID to respondent ID and then I removed uh, all the, I did remove those question rating columns. So we've got the other columns there. So far the visuals that have been created have been for my own use for exploratory analysis. If I want to communicate to, to an audience to the results of the survey, and I've just got one um, graphic to do it in and a limited amount of time, a kind of graphic equivalent of the elevator pitch, then I might use a variation of one of these. This is a 100% bar chart. And what I've done here is I put the question code on the axis. We can see the four questions on the rows. I put the sentiment, whether it's boring or fascinating on the legend and the number of respondents. So for example, that we can see that in COVID 28.4%, 23 respondents uh, said it was a fascinating topic. I've done three variations of this. I started off with the default colors. I used a sequential scale as the responses said they were more and more interesting. 
but I eventually decided that this sort of diverging scale was best. And this is the, the visualization that I would show because I think it quickly communicates that the order of interest in the topics, schools and elections and crime and COVID coming a distant fourth. We've just scratched the surface of analyzing survey data. And in fact, we're going to return to this topic in future videos and future sessions. We also haven't done anything with those comments that users provided. So in our next video, we're going to do a word frequency analysis of those in Power BI and also one of a famous Victorian novel. I hope to see you then. Bye.